Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Brooke and you're at the Pink Frog. Today I'm going to um, take you guys on a journey with me. There was a dress that I wanted to make for a really long time and it had to do with, it's the Harry Potter, I want to make a Harry Potter dress. And licensed fabric is really expensive. It's like $13 a yard so I waited for a good sale to happen and one happened. So licensed fabric went on sale on Mother's Day, which was Sunday. So I ran out and I got the fabric that I wanted to get and I knew exactly what I wanted to make. So I am doing, the pattern that I'm gonna be using is the B6167, which I know how to make. It uses boning, it, um, it's really super cute. And, come in for a close up. The one that I'm gonna be doing is this one because it's got the, the top part here which has the border detail and right here. So um, the fabric that I chose to use, my Joanna Fabrics did not have enough yardage, so I had to go really far away to get this. This is the Snuggly fabric. It's got Hogwarts all over it. And that's gonna be like the outside of the dress. And then for the bodice part that's up here that's kind of ruched and looks like it's it's harnessed is going to be, what we do? this fabric, which is 100% cotton. Can you see? There we go. And it's got all the houses on it, Slytherin, Gryffindor. Um, and I am so excited about doing this dress because I've wanted to do it for forever. And a lot of the Harry Potter, uh, I don't know, a lot of the Harry Potter um, fabrics, we didn't have my local Joanne, so I was really glad that I found this. Um, this pattern uses boning. It's something that I know how to do well. Um, and it's not hard boning, it's not like quirks, it's not like quirks tree or anything. So it's pretty simple, um, you're just using it to tuck, tuck in a little bit in a couple of places, so it's not that difficult. So if you guys are interested in this sort of thing, please stick, come along and stick with me and we'll check this out together. And if not, you guys have a great day and I'll see you on the next video. See you in a few. Bye. So these are all your body measurements that's important to take. And then up here, because you're um, using boning and you're using like a little bodice top, it gives you your cup size in here. And it tells you how to measure for that. That's important in the instructions. And then right down here, it says select your cup size, right in here. And it gives you all the information you need to know about how to measure for that. It's pretty forgiving, I think. And then I'm going to be doing, um, this one right here which is A and it tells me in here that this layout is meant for cup size D which I am definitely not a D I am an AB so I have to switch out it, it's uh, I have to switch out 8 and 1 and 8 for 3 and 10 and um, so just make sure you pay attention to all your instructions because these can be kind of tricky if you uh, if you don't so let's get to cutting the fabric. So I've cut out all my pattern pieces and I've laid them out on this piece of cardboard like I always do. The only thing that I have to do now is make sure that I put all my notches in and everything but I have to go back now and I have to mark all the marks on my fabric. So that is what I'm going to do next. I'm so excited about this dress, it's gonna be really super cute. So the first step is interfacing. I don't interface, so I'm gonna skip all the way down here to bodice front and bodice back. And it says to gather upper edge of inset one, two, three between large circles. And then it says gather lower edges of insert between, inset between small circles. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And when I'm done with that, I'll come back and show you guys what that looks like. So on my pattern piece, it says just cut one on fold. I don't do that. I cut two on fold because I want this to be lined. So this is the one piece that I'm, is the front piece. And then this piece is the back piece. The one that's gonna be underneath because I want it to be lined and I want it to be lined nicely. I don't want it to be lined with interfacing or anything else, I just want it to look nice. So I'm gonna iron these pieces and then I'm gonna stitch them together and I'll show you guys what that looks like along with the stitching on the outside to actually give it a little bit 
of um, ruffle. So I have done a running stitch all the way along the top part here. And then this is the string to it because I'm going to pull on this and it's going to ruche this all together. And then I also did one here. And then that's the tail for that. So I'm going to ruche this all together and I will show you what that looks like. So I've pulled the thread from over here and I've just gathered all the stitches along here, which is really simple to do. And that's between the small notches. Again, this is going to have to be adjusted because you're going to fit this to the bodice. So that's what the first step is on ruching the bottom between. Ooh, we've got a big thunderstorm going on here. Sorry. Um, we've got a, so um, perhaps I shouldn't be sewing or filming. <laughs> Anyway, um, so that's what that looks like. And I'm gonna do the next step. The next step is to do four, five, and four, which I'm gonna start now. That is four, this is five, and I'm gonna put those together. I grabbed six by accident. I can go over there with that. Um, so now I've got four and five. I have to sew these together. This is going to be the front that holds that ruched piece right in here that we just did. So this is four and five, and I'm going to do, um, I'm going to put that together right now, and I will show you guys what that looks like. And again, I've done all my notches, and I've put all my markings down on this, so I'm all good to go. So eventually, this isn't sewed in or anything. I just finished putting this piece, this piece, and this piece together. And then I just kind of put that underneath so you guys could get a shot of what that's going to look like when it's done. So that's the top part. That's the front part. So it'll look like there's a, a little blouse sandwiched in there really nicely. So it turned out really nice. I pressed my sides. The only thing that I wish I had given more thought to was the placement of the actual... Um, crest for the Harry Potter crest, but it's okay. Still looks cool. And then the skirt is the easiest part. Um, and skip off to the next part. I'll be right back. Now I've stay stitched. It asks, it asks to stay stitch the top part of the bodice so that it doesn't stretch. So I've done that, and this is a little off, and I can trim that. So I've stay stitched that. Now what I'm going to do is take the ruched top that goes to this and I'm going to attach it to this because that's the next, next instructions. If I could speak. See you in a bit. So what I've done here is I've taken the bowed part of the bodice and I've attached it now to the um, outside of the bodice and I've matched all my dots. So there's my big dot. And there's going to be a dot here that matches it. And then I've got a little dot somewhere in here that matches the dot right there. So, and then you just take all the fullness that you have here and you make it so it fits. And you pin it. And I use a lot of pins. A lot of people don't have to use that many pins, but I do because I want to make sure that the fullness of this is in here properly and it will sew nicely. So I am... Well, eventually, I'm just going to flip it over so you guys can see, it will eventually look like that. Sweet. Okay, on to the next. So now everything is sewn together, and this is what it looks like from the front. And then you're supposed to press your seams towards the bodice front, which I did do. That's what it looks like from the back. What's kind of nice about using the fleecy fabric is you don't have to finish the edges, which I love. Cotton you have to finish because it frays all like that. But everything else, it looks really well. On to the next. So now it's telling me that I need to go in here and I need to do my um, all my darts. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to do my darts on both these pieces. There's two pieces here. There's two pieces and I've just got to do my darts. Those are the two back pieces and I've ironed my darts and those red lines that you see are where the boning is going to go. So, oops, right over here. The boning is going to go right there. 
And then this is from the front side, so you see what the back is going to look like. Yay! Totally thrilled. I have put the pieces together. That's what it looks like from afar. Now I have to do the stay and bodice lining and the stay will go on the back of that and it will tighten that up and the lining will make this so it's firm and I also have to put in this the um, phoning. So that's next, but not before lunch. This is on Dolly. And I'm having a really big problem with this because this is really huge and I'm not and this is a size 12 and I mean I've got her pinned. So this is the back as you can see and it's like double of what it should be. So I don't know. This is really really big. I'm gonna take this and try it on and see what happens but I gotta eat lunch first because I am starving and what a better time to have a break than have on a rainy day like today is and today is very rainy outside. So it would be fun to have a nice hot tea. There's my little pig. Isn't it cute? I got this at, uh... Hi there! I got this at, uh, Home Goods for like 12 bucks. Anyway, I'll be back. So for lunch today, I made smoked salmon sandwiches and I topped them off with dandelions that I have that grow out in the yard. Um, we don't chemicalize our lawn at all. We keep everything natural so that the bunnies and the birds and all the little animals can eat them. They really enjoy them and I can eat them too because dandelions are really delicious. They're great in salads. And I put smoked salmon underneath there with some chives and cream, um, cream cheese. And then under that, I made a little tiny rough chocolate and almond raspberry tea cakes which are really delicious. They're made with very thin bread, dark chocolate, almond paste, raspberry jam, and then topped off with a delicious raspberry. I've got some Earl Grey tea that I've gotten in my little teapot. And then I have my um, cranberry juice that I have because I don't drink alcohol at all. And then I've got my lemon water. And today I made a little salad with some quinoa. Quinoa! And some lemon zest and some carrot zest on top. And this is what I'm going to eat today for lunch. I just kind of want to show you guys this. This is a tea warmer that I made. I improvised this. This right here is my teapot. And I like, I hate cold tea. And I hate cold water when I have my tea. Nobody likes it. So I made an impromptu tea warmer by using a um, fondue pot warmer. So that, that is a fondue pot warmer from like way back. And I just put a little tea light underneath there to keep my tea warm and it really does a great job. So this is my reward for my hard work today so far. I'm going to eat my lunch and I hope you guys have your lunch too. If you were here, I would share all my goodness with you. It tastes really good and I'll see you guys in a bit. Now both pieces are done. There is the front piece so that's going to be showing on the front and this is going to be the inside piece. So these two pieces are done. This piece is the stay piece that has the stay on it and then that will be the front and I have to put the boning in. These two pieces are a lot bigger than I am so I've got to try and figure that out and while I'm trying to figure that out um, I will do some ironing and make sure that all my pieces are pressed really nicely. Yeah but I really love the way this is turning out. Yay! Exciting! Cool. So the next step I have to do is I have to put boning from here down to here. This is what's considered boning. And you can buy this at uh, Joann's and you buy it by the yard. I'm trying to focus here while I'm trying to hold the camera at the same time. So this is the end of the boning and this is, in, this is encased. If you pull back the casing, it looks like this. So this is really super square. As you can see, you have to cut these little edges off. 
with a pair of snippers just to round it out to make it so it's nice. So I'm going to do that next. I'll show you what that looks like. So basically all you're doing is you're taking the edges off that square so it just doesn't poke you or it breaks through the lining. And so now I'm going to cut this in this line the same length and put the and just easily sew this in because there's fabric on either side on this. There's fabric on this side, there's fabric on that side. And you just sew on either side of it. And it makes it real simple. Very easy. Instead of doing um, channel where you have to actually take fabric and do it yourself. This has already been done for you. So this is what it looks like all sewn in. You have to be really careful. I just bent a needle and I took a tip off another one. So what I'm going to do is, it doesn't call for it, but I'm going to put one in the seam here. Because I did it with the first one. I'm not sure why I did it, but um, anything for more uh, stability I think is a good thing. So I'm going to put another one in here and then just continue over on this side and I'm going to finish doing this one. This is too big for me, so what I've done is I'm just folding this like this to the actual seam line of where I was supposed to put the um, the boning and I'm putting the boning here because this is way too wide for me. It's way too big for me. And this is the back. This is not the front. This is the back piece that you're putting the boning in. So I'll show you what that looks like when it's all finished. So now I've got the boning in. That's the stay. And then this is a seam. And I put boning in here twice. It doesn't ask for boning to be in here twice, but I do put it in twice. Let's see if I can't get it. Because it boning has a tendency to to oh, this is so frustrating. So I've got my boning in. That's the stay. So this is the actual back part of the bodice. So it's the under part. And I put bodice. I put bodice. I put boning in two places. I put it in the seam, and I put it where it's supposed to be. It does not call for it to be in the seam, but I put it in there for extra strength and more stability in the actual bodice part. So now what I have to do is I have to attach the front of the bodice to the bodice lining, which this is, to the stay, which I'll do up here. And when I come back, I'll show you what that looks like. I just want to show you from the outside. That's the seams and the other seams. Okay. So here I've attached the, the stay to the front of the bodice. That's the front, and then this is the back side. And it came together really nicely. Now I have to do some understitching under here because it calls for understitching. Not sure why, but yeah. So this is the most difficult part of the dress. The rest of the dress is easy because um, I've got all the the bodice is all done. Everything's done. That's the difficult part now. I just have to do the understitching and then put the skirt together and do the zipper. Yay! I'm really happy with the way this turned out. So now what I've done is I have pinned. This is the inside. So I've taken pins and I've pinned down the bodice, which is sandwiched down here to the waist. And now I have to go in on the opposite side and I have to take all these pins out and then pin them on to the other side. So difficult. I hate this part. And then I, I will um, I'll start sewing on this side. And this is called stitching in the ditch. So when I go to, and this is just so you can see, this is the front bodice. So when I stitch in this, after I get my pins all lined up in here, this is called stitching in the ditch. And you stitch right along the seam line. And with your fingers crossed, it'll look really nice, both inside and out. And then we insert the zipper. Cool. Okay, so I'm really frustrated right now, and this is where I, I like lose massive patience. I suck at putting in zippers. I mean, I'm terrible at it, and I've got to put them in by hand, and this is why. See this little area right here? No matter what I do, that's where the bodice is. And the bodice is lined, so no matter how much bulk that I cut out of here, there's still a huge knot of fabric in there. And when I go to pull it in the zipper, this always happens, no matter what. No matter what I sew, 
and it, I, it just aggravates the hell out of me because it looks so bad. I put zippers in bad to begin with, and then, I, oh my god, don't even get me started. Today I am addressing the Harry Potter dress with the zipper issue. I wanted to say thank you, thank you for so much from the bottom of my heart for everybody who chimed in and helped out and gave advice. I read everything that everybody said and I agree with all of it, depending on what the situation was with the dress. So I wanted to show you guys what I'm up against and why I've decided to take the, act, the action against the dress that I have. Um, what I ended up deciding to do is do an exposed zipper. Um, I went and I went to uh, Hobby Lobby and they have really cute they have really cute exposed zippers, but they didn't have any in gray. They had them in black, they had them in white. So um, I ended up keeping my zipper, but I'm gonna add some like ribbon on the side of it to make it look a little more cute. A little more friendly than just a straight zipper going down. Now I'm going to show you guys what happened and why I'm doing what I'm doing so you guys can understand and you guys can see because you guys were so helpful and I really appreciate it and then we'll see what the end result looks like. I hope that this can be resolved with doing this and I'll show you why it might be a problem that it won't work. Hold on one sec. So I've taken the fabric apart and I ironed it and I've got the two layers here that are really chewed up. But if you watch how steep the gradation goes, that's supposed to be on a straight line. This is supposed to be over here going straight down to match up with the rest of it, and it doesn't. And the reason why I did that was because it was really loose in through here. And I even, I mean, I cut away a lot of fabric even to here. It had about another inch more fabric here that I cut away at. So. But right here is where the buckling starts with the, with the zipper. So that's the reason why it was my fault for making such a huge, gigantic, dramatic cut and not grading it properly. So if you look at the, that back up, if you try and add a zipper to this, even, on, even if I take it and I put it like that, you can see why it would buckle. All I'd have to do is bend this this way and it would buckle, just like a roadway would. I mean, because you've got tension here, and then you've got tension all the way here, and it can't make it over that far. So something's got to take the strain on the grade. So what I'm going to try and do now is I went to Hobby Lobby, and I, I'm going to have to do an exposed zipper. I'm not quite sure how this is going to turn out, but I'm going to try. Um, do an exposed zipper, and I got some cute thread, some cute thread, I got some cute um, ribbon so that I can either put it on that way, which I think is too gingerbread -y, or like this, which I think will be on either side. I think it'll look cute like that. So it'll just have a little bit more room on there. And I'll have a little bit of an edge, so it'll look cute. Ta-da! Yay! It's finished! It's through! I'm so happy! It turned out perfectly. I'm going to do a little happy dance. A little salsa happy dance there. It's wonderful. I'm so happy. I'm going to turn around so you guys can see. The back is done. There's no huge hunchman's back bulge, which I'm really happy about. I'm going to come in for even closer. So you can see, and I'll walk away. It turned out perfectly. I've got a crinoline under this, so it gives it a little more fullness, but the dress turned out magically. And I'm so grateful because I could not have done this if it wasn't for you guys. I think this is a wonderful, wonderful, happy time because you guys really helped me out. I so appreciate it. Oh, I'm gonna pull up, do a little close up here. Let me just do it one more time. So you guys can see, I'll stand up on the chair. You guys can see the back and the front. And then I got this really super cute crinoline yesterday. I went to, after I was feeling sad and blue about what happened, I went to um, 
I went to Goodwill and I ended up getting that wonderful crinoline. So I was really excited about that. But this turned out perfectly. The inside of the dress is totally Frankenstein. I don't even care because I thank you from the bottom of my heart. This dress wouldn't have happened without you guys. So everybody out there, I want you to have a beautiful, magical day. Do all the things you want to do. And again, from my heart to you, a big hug, a virtual reality hug, but a big hug from me to you. Thank you very much, and you guys have a great day, and I will see you all very soon. Bye.